What about a quick blurb on how to polish minor scratches from your fountain pen's body? That's a good question. Um, I have some supplies somewhere. Shoot, I meant to grab these before I started shooting the video and I don't even see it over there. I have a jeweler's cloth, okay? It's nothing fancy, but basically if you go to any jewelry store, anywhere where they sell watches or jewelry, you'll find these jeweler's cloths. You can get them for six, seven, eight bucks, whatever. Um, basically it's a soft cloth that's gonna have like kind of two parts to it. It's gonna have a, a softer, not a softer, but Okay, it's gonna have two parts to it usually. Um, and what a jeweler's cloth is, is just a, a soft cloth that is kind of infused with this polishing compound, really fine polishing compound. Um, the nice thing that I like about jeweler's cloth, they do work really well for just, I mean, you're talking really light scratches. Um, you know, just kind of, um, you know, I'll call them shelf worn scratches, just, you know, light stuff, just from the pen kind of rolling around after a while. You can polish it up, get it looking really shiny again. The nice thing about jeweler's cloth specifically is it's made for metal. So you can use it on your trim, your pen body and everything, get it all shiny and you don't have to be super careful with anything and it'll polish it up and you will have a really hard time doing any damage with a jeweler's cloth. Um, if it's a deeper scratch, that's really something where you're more into like a repair situation as opposed to just a polishing. You can use micro mesh or a mylar paper. Um, you gotta be careful with that though because that's a much stronger abrasive than the jeweler's cloth and that you can actually take the finish off your trim if you are careless with it. So watch out with that. Um, also, I have used this acrylic polish which is essentially a polishing compound in a liquid. Um, I imagine, I have never actually tried this, but I imagine a polishing compound that you use for like buffing out your car would be a similar kind of thing. It's just in a paste instead of uh, a liquid like what I've used. That's what I actually, I used, um, well, I've got that stuff right here. So hey, bear with me for one second while I find this. I don't know where my jeweler's cloth is, but I do have my um, polishing compound. And this stuff is nothing fancy. I just, you can buy this at Woodcraft. That's where I got mine back when I was in the pen making world. Um, but it's just a plastic polish. So Hut Ultra Gloss. I mean, I'm not affiliated with this company at all. And I can't even tell you how many pens that I turned. I must've turned hundreds of acrylic pens and I only use this much polish. So this will last you 1200 lifetimes. Um, and you just use a little cotton rag like this and you just polish it out. Um, I've considered sourcing out some polish and maybe carrying that in my store if that's something of interest to anybody. I get asked for, about it time, from time to time. I'm not sure if it's worth my trouble of doing that. If you would really be interested, you know, I mean, I've got like brass sheets and mylar paper and micro mesh and that kind of stuff. Um, so if it's of interest, I'll look into that. Um, and then what I used in my pen making days, um, a series of micro mesh pads that vary in in um, aggressiveness. So the one, the micro mesh that I sell on my site for nib smoothing is a 12,000 grit, which kind of feels like leather. It's very light abrasive in the grand scheme of things, but it's pretty aggressive. You do not want to get that on your metal trim. You want to stick to plastic and that you will need a multi-stage kind of thing. So you, if you're using a micro mesh or maybe even a mylar paper, that's gonna help to get out deeper scratches, but it's gonna leave it really cloudy looking. Then you'll need to follow it up with a jeweler's cloth or a plastic polish to really get it looking shiny and new again. That's the thing with you know any type of polishing or finishing. You know now I'm harkening back to kind of my woodworking days when I was working a lot with polishes and different uh, finishes and stuff. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to use, trying to skip steps. Okay in in polishing so a lot of people will use a really aggressive grit and then try to skip to like a polish and what happens is the aggressive grit ends up leaving a bunch of deeper scratches you polish it up and you end up with a really shiny coat with deeper scratches that you can see and it looks really terrible a lot of people um you know you that's how you can tell when something is not made well uh is because people skip steps if you're using, you know, for example, if you have a deep scratch and you need to go to a, you know, um, like a 3200 grit micro mesh, what that means is when you go 3200, 
After you do that, you need to go to 3,600, and then you need to go to 4,000, and then a 6,000, and then an 8,000, and then a 12,000. You've got to do all those grits. So if you've got a really deep scratch, you got to go deep, and then you got to progressively polish up to the point where you're getting to a really fine polish. If you just go with a 3600 grit and then you try and throw an acrylic polish on top of that, it's gonna look bad. Or you're gonna end up using the acrylic polish for like 10 years to try to polish it all the way down. You can't skip steps. So, it's probably more information than you needed to know. I haven't thought about polishing in a long time, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> you may just choose to live with the scratch. It depends on your pen. Um, yeah, there you go. So that covers that, Craig.